Thanks for staying with us. Now, the American University of Nigeria has held its 12th commencement ceremony for the class of 2020 and 2021 in Yola, the Adamawa State Capital. There were dignitaries there, including the president of African Development Bank Group, Akiwumi Adeshino. Adeshino made it clear that he believes in Nigerian unity. There have always been calls for Nigeria to remain indivisible, only that now the clamor is becoming louder by the day with the turn of events in the country. Dr. Akin Wumi Adeshinor is the president of the African Development Bank and not a lone voice towards the unity of the Nigerian entity. Speaking here at the 12th commencement ceremony of the APTI American University of Nigeria, he holds that it is pertinent for well-meaning Nigerians to always stand for the truth and preach for the unity of the nation as the country belongs to all and sundry in Nigeria. He, however, calls for the leadership of the country to always do the needful by creating policies and programs that will carry everybody along, hence the need for the peaceful coexistence of all ethnic groups in Nigeria. Nigeria must start managing its diversity for prosperity. We must try for national cohesion, not ethnic nationalities. We must address the fundamental reasons for agitations by listening, understanding, removing prejudices, and allowing for open national dialogues without preconditions, or with one goal, build one cohesive, united, fair, just, and equitable nation for all. The president of APTI American University of Nigeria discloses that by educating the youth, the insecurity in the nation will drastically reduce, thereby making them self-employed for even more productive engagements. She appeals to citizens of goodwill to emulate the former vice president, Atiku Abubakar, by creating more universities where the youth will be busy with studies for adequate equipping as leaders of tomorrow. Youth investment, I never really knew what empowerment meant and the importance of working for the common good. Our theme here at the American University of Nigeria, the, the world's only developing university focused on all of those challenges that you talked about. And if more eminent Nigerians home and abroad keep speaking up for a more formidable Nigeria, Perhaps our alien nation will come out stronger as a point of reference in the Committee of Nations. Now, our next report still has something to do with additional. The founder of the American University in Nigeria, Atiku Abubakar, wants his bank, the AFDB, to consider investing more in the private sector than the public sector. Abubakar disclosed this at an interactive section with journalists. Here are journalists in an interactive session with former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. This is an avenue to ask him pertinent questions. He believes that if the private sector is more empowered, youth and women in the country will be better engaged in different businesses that will boost the nation's economy. He holds that government cannot bring much development to players in the private sector and especially women get the needed support. I feel that we should consider dealing with the private sector more, whether it is in agriculture, whether it is in industry, and currently a bank is development. The president of the African Development Bank Group, Dr. Akinwumi Adishino, believes that Nigeria is not poor but the leaders should use its resources judiciously. We need to continue to work on public financial management to also continue to improve the efficiency of public expenditures. It's not just what you budgeted, it's how it is spent and what it is spent on. And with this call, one can only hope that leaders in Nigeria will make a more judicious use of the nation's vast resources. 
Akumi Adeshina further said government must be open to representation based on nationality, not on ethnicity, to build a society of mutual trust where diversity is well managed. Nigeria has officially ended the first phase of its vaccination plan. The country is now preparing to commence the second vaccination phase in the next few weeks. The executive director of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency said this at a press conference in Abuja. Plus TV Africa's correspondent Aneta Felix monitored the virtual event. Seated in this conference hall in Abuja, are members of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, NPHCDA, the World Health Organization, and men of the press. The executive director of the NPHCDA, Dr. Faisal Shwaibu, gives these details about Nigeria's vaccination efforts. Nigeria has successfully vaccinated 3,938,000 945 eligible persons across 36 states and the FCT. This represents about 98% utilization of the 4,024,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine that we received from the COVAX facility in March of 2021. This comprises 2,534,000 205 people who have been vaccinated with the first dose and 1,404,205 people who have received their second dose of the vaccine. He disclosed that Nigeria is expecting the following shipments of more COVID-19 vaccine doses in the next few weeks. Firstly, 3,924,000 doses of the Oxford AstraZeneca by the end of July or early August 2021 from the COVAX facility. Secondly, 3,930,910 doses of the Pfizer BioNTech or Moderna COVID-19 vaccine in August from the COVAX facility. This has been donated by the United States government. On his part, the WHO country representative, Dr. Walter Mulumbo, appeals to Nigerians to shift their perspective regarding the value of the vaccines. When the vaccine is available, please demand to be able to take it. It is there for you to, be, to, for you to take your social responsibility to protect yourselves and to protect uh, your communities and your families. This is a vaccine and a pandemic that won't go away for the time being unless we take the vaccine seriously and use it uh, promptly. As Nigeria battles the new Delta wave of the coronavirus, the National Primary Health Care Development Agency continues to advise Nigerians to adhere to health guidelines such as wearing a face mask and maintaining a hand hygiene and a social distance. Aneta Felix, Plus TV Africa. Well, just also a reminder that COVID-19 is real and still very much out there and requires everyone to take preventive measures seriously. The Walusha Inka Center for Investigative Journalism has held its 13th media lecture series in Lagos. The lecture examines several uh, perspectives towards transforming Nigeria. They include constitutional restructuring, the rule of law, true independence, community-based education, and oil. At a time Nigeria is facing many socio-economic and security challenges, discussions like this one are considered necessary to help the country recalibrate. It's the 13th Wolosho Inca Center Media Lecture Series with the theme, Remaking Nigeria Towards a Secure and Viable Union. Part of the conversation by the panelists is on a community-based model for basic education, the rule of law, oil economy, and Nigerians' unity. Common Nigerians don't no longer have access to quality basic education. 
Most of our kids are on the floor, on the ground, under the shade of trees, called school. We have created a system that entrenches economic mediocrity. Mediocrity in economic governance. That the only thing the politicians, the political class can think of is more crude oil. They don't know how to produce. They don't know how to encourage production. The reckless violation of the rights of Nigerians on a daily basis, it is most shameful that this is coming under a government that pretends to be progressive. Many press statements, no press conference. What does that mean? It means that we have not had any avenue to ask our president questions. He has just told us things that he wants to tell us, and we have to deal with them, go figure them out, go search them out. But he does not sit down for Nigerians to ask him, Mr. President, can you answer us about the issue? A senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falanos, shares his view on media freedom. They have just approved a budget of $4.8 billion to the security forces to monitor your telephone conversation, your WhatsApp and other. So that when you are communicating with your friend or your, or your political ally and they say the message is dangerous, you are going to be arrested. And I am, no, I'm saying, have no fear, we are going to go. The panelists prefer possible solutions to Nigerians' problems. All of those mechanisms, legislations that had made the center the ultimate and sole controller of national resources need to be dismantled. The battle to rescue or revive the soul of our nation lies squarely with the Nigerian people because the National Assembly has become a national embarrassment. The lecture series double as the celebration of the Nobel laureate, Woloshe Inka's birthday. The distinguished Nigerian is celebrating his 87th birthday on June the 13th. Happy birthday! Well, conversations like this serve as a reminder that Nigeria's problems are solvable. It's a wrap now, but before we go, let's still remind you to follow us at Plus TV Africa on Facebook and Instagram. And do subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. I'm Jacinta Ubiugu. Thanks for watching.